Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, there's so many things going on in this space. It is amazing. So first up, over 90% of Ethereum supply is now in profit. And I got to tell you, this is just one of the reasons why I believe Ethereum is a $10,000 coin also. Ethereum's final testnet goes live, just went live today, August 4th, and this marks the three months until ETH 2.0 launch, and when that happens, watch out. On top of that, we're going to talk about yield farming and DeFi is fun, but don't forget about Uncle Sam, and that part is not as fun as far as taxes go. But I will just uh, reiterate, this is one of the reasons why Ethereum is a 10k coin. Also, we're going to quickly look at Uniswap and why I think it's just fantastic. And why I actually added it to the exchange and wallet fees uh, Google spreadsheet because it's just so good. And lastly, we'll go over a question of the day, which is all about trading and other such things. But let's take a look at what's going on in the market today. So today, it is August 4th. It's about 1.30 Texas time. And uh, I got to tell you, this is a, these are exciting times. And the reason is because right now, I mean, we had a huge run up and there wasn't that much of a huge drop. It didn't, it wasn't like Bitcoin went to 12,000 and went to six or went up to, you know, 11.5 and then dropped down to eight. And it was a pretty respectable pullback, nothing too uh, amazing or too frightening, um, which is good for this space. I mean, I like it when uh, things aren't just uh, too crazy. Now, having said that, I will tell you this, 10% drop does not affect me. 20% drop doesn't affect me. 50% drop kind of gets to me a little bit uh, nowadays, I'll just be honest with you. But uh, try doing a 10% or 20% drop in traditional markets. People would lose their minds. But uh, that's the difference between us and them. That's just how it is. Anyhow, so Ethereum is down a little bit, but up 20% for the week, hovering around that $400 mark at 387. XRP, $0.29, cents. watch out. Tether, Bitcoin Cash, Cardano. Ooh, Cardano's in the sixth spot. That's good. Uh, and Bitcoin SV moves down. Again, don't know why Bitcoin SV is in the top 10. I have no idea. If you know why Bitcoin SV is in the top 10, and uh, you know, tell me why it's awesome in the description, because I just can't figure it out. Litecoin's still there. Uh, good for that. You know, it's just down a little bit, but uh, up 8% for the week. And Chainlink uh, just coming up massively strong at uh, almost 12% for the day, 33%. I, I can tell you right now, it's over 9, and I know that is that is its all-time high. It has never hit 9 before, and over the last uh, 24 hours, it just hit that and exceeded it. And this is on top of uh, the Zeus Capital LLP FUD article, where it said, you know, Chainlink is going to zero. Now, there could be a lot of like 3D chess going on there, I don't know. I don't really care. I just know that uh, the price is up and it's good. And, um, you know, we've talked about it being a scam before, so I'm not going to go over it. But uh, it looks like it's uh, doing pretty well. It's a project that works. I, I don't think anybody can deny that. So uh, I'm looking uh, pretty happy about that. Binance Coin and 10, crypto.com taking a tumble after that MCO to CRO swap. If uh, you want to learn about that, we did that yesterday. And a uh, lot of, a lot of, ticked off people about that and I can understand why especially trying to get those jade cards which is what everybody told me so yeah and then uh, Taze was up seven and uh, pretty good so overall in all this is an exciting time this is the time to be into cryptocurrency digital assets when there are big moves coming up on the upswing and we're not just seeing huge tumbles and tumbles and tumbles or which is even worse in my opinion is when we just trade sideways God, that is so boring but uh, right now exciting times love it let's jump into today's stories so first up over 9 percent of ETH supply is now in profit and the first sentence is going to get you it says here more than 90 percent of eth's circulating supply is now in profit the last time this level was observed was in early 2018 when the price of crypto was 925 so let that sink in right now it's below 400 yet 90 percent of people are in profit how that how's that happening because it, it it would make sense to me like well it's 925 it's higher than everybody's in profit or 90 percent sure enough so it's it's quite simply my friend it's called dca dollar cost averaging and see it's the thing that i do i don't trade uh, i'm not into trading i've got other things going on i just i just don't have the time and patience or stomach for it right now so when i talk about dollar cost averaging remember this and think about this i got in in late 2017 and i bought on the upswing and i bought at some of the highs i remember buying ethereum at like 1100 dollars. yeah me and uh i learned a lot of lessons and i'm happy that i did because uh that's what uh, made me who i am today and how i actually invest and do things with cryptocurrency see i don't just wait for everything to start running up and then do it again or all these different crazy things. I just say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dollar cost average. And every week or every day or every three days or because uh, I, 
I do dollar cost averaging different uh, for different coins, different projects at different times. And Ethereum is one of those projects where I've gone and dollar cost averaged every day, or sometimes every three days or every week, I change it up. So even though I've bought 1100, I've also bought at like 200 and 98. So as I start to dollar cost average and buy things at a lower level, my average cost for Ethereum goes down when I buy the dips. And that's why, like, if I just let it just go, oh, poor me, geez, I shouldn't have done that. And uh, I'm like, well, I'm like, uh, you know, in the negative. No, what I'm going to do is I believe in the projects. I believe in the tech, <laughs> like those memes always talk about. So I, um, I'm just going to keep buying and I buy at a lower price and it brings my overall price down and that is what is happening here. So 90% of people are in profit and you can't beat that. That is fantastic. There's two more pieces of this and then we'll finish up. Uh, the Spartan Group's co-founder Kelvin Co. commented, the strong move in Ethereum has to do with the upcoming ETH 2.0 launch, which is a major catalyst. Could not agree more. Every phase of ETH 2.0 over the next two to three years brings Ethereum closer to its final state and will be the catalyst for ETH to really jump to the moon. So real quick, let's take a look at what they're talking about here. Um, before we go live with Ethereum 2.0, there has to be these test nets. And the third one just went live today and it marks three months until ETH 2.0 actually comes into and becomes fruition. So, and there was actually talk, Vitalik Buterin was saying, you know what? It may not happen, uh, or no, no, it wasn't Vitalik Buterin. It was, it was one of the lead programmers said, hey, it might, it might not happen this year. And Vitalik's like, no, it's going to happen. And I got to tell you, I appreciate, I tip my hat to somebody who says, or the CEO or the leader who says, look, we're doing it this way. It's going to happen. We can't start keep screwing around. Let's get this done. And nothing promotes that type of atmosphere like competition. And uh, I'll just say Cardano is pushing everybody. They're pushing everybody. Uh, so is Tezos. So are the other projects. So these are exciting times because everybody's in the fray. This isn't 2017 when it's just a bunch of white papers. Things are actually happening. I like to see this. And when you have this much competition, people like, hey, I'm going to make things happen. So uh, for the test net, real quick, Ethereum developers have launched the Medela test net, which is the last test net prior to Ethereum 2.0 mainnet launch. The test net went live on August 4th. 2020 at 1 p.m. So today, the Medela test not matters because it includes many of Ethereum 2.0's key features in a real working environment, but the testnet does not handle any, re any real value or real ETH, and it doesn't uh, allow validators to earn a profit. So basically, everything's just going through the paces just to make sure that things don't break, and that's the big thing. So they're going to go through all these things, make sure it works, that's great, and then they can launch everything, just like what uh, Cardano did with their main net, just like what everybody does. I mean, they do their due diligence. So again, tip my hat to these guys. Uh, hopefully it all works out, because if this does, which I've been very critical of the Ethereum team and the Cardano team for hitting their milestones, well, guess what? Cardano hit their milestone. They did what they said they were going to do, and that is huge. So when you have that type of thing happening, what does Ethereum look back? Oh, wow, there's people at our heels. We better pick up the pace. That's what's great about competition. Free market. All right, let's jump back to the main article. So there's just one more sentence to go over. And it says, furthermore, news.bitcoin.com is where we pulled the article from. Recently reported the total value locked within the decentralized finance or DeFi ecosystem has surpassed uh, over four billion, which is amazing, and uh, that's DeFi. DeFi is another catalyst. I mean, it's just this is why I'm always talking about Ethereum. This is why I, I think Ethereum is a 10k coin. Everything's built on Ethereum. Everything's going on Ethereum. DeFi is just one of those those rocket fuels that are going to bring it into the forefront. So, if we have a new t a new uh, Ethereum 2.0 with sharding, with proof of stake with all the decentralized finance, which I believe is going to be big, not for retail investors, but for small businesses. I'm going to get into that in a second. There is no stopping it if it can just hit its goals or its milestones. Just do that and they'll be successful. So what I want to do is just kind of break down DeFi real quick and just go over some basics and some advanced stuff and uh, what's going on in the space right now. So, this is an article from Crypto Briefing. Real big fans of these guys. They do uh, solid work and uh, I like all their articles that they have. So uh, they're just talking about, you know, uh, farming, DeFi, yield farming. And it talks about 
when you're doing these types of things, you have to worry about taxation. So this is the boring part, but it's an important part, and I'll get into the other good stuff in a bit. But depending on circumstances, crypto are either treated as property or as income, depending where you're at. In America, it's property. Cryptocurrency is property. In Russia, it's property. Uh, other places, it could be income, sure. When you sell or exchange crypto, you report capital gains and losses, similar to selling stocks or property. And this is one of those things where... Um, it doesn't matter how much you make it, it's how much you keep and i can tell you like with my amazon business i thought i was making a ton of money and then i started to look at whoa hey wait i got these fees i got all these these, these storage fees i got these transaction fees i got all these things for advertising i got for shipping costs and i look at everything i'm like whoa i'm not making that much so it's not about how much you make it's how much you keep and you have to keep an eye on these types of things because if not yeah what are you doing this all for so anyhow Continue on, it says, when you lend out your crypto, the interest accrued is taxed as income. Let me say that again. When you lend your crypto, the interest that you get is going to be taxed. Everything's going to be taxed. Everything's not everything's a taxable event, but when you uh, sell crypto, when you exchange crypto, like Bitcoin for Ethereum or Ethereum for tomato coin or uh, tomato coin for potato foot coin or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, all these things are taxable events and you have to keep control of it because guess who's uh, looking at you? Uh, Big brother. Uh, taxes. So capital gains can be short or long term. In the case with DeFi, your profits fall into the short term category, which means you'll be holding assets for less than 12 months. So real quick, any less than 12 months is short term capital gains. 12 months and a day is long term capital gains. And there is a huge difference in the short term. I can just tell you like this, this just falls into how much you make. Let's just say you're a person who makes $65,000 and let's say you're married and filing jointly. I mean, if you're, so you and your wife are making 65,000, so you're only gonna be because tax 12%, not so bad. Let's say that you're married and filing separately. Well, that right there, if you're at 65,000, you're gonna pay 22%. Essentially, one fourth of everything that you made is going to the government. Same thing with head of household. And um, I gotta tell you, it's that, plus the state taxes. So don't forget about those. Now, in Texas, we have zero state taxes, uh, Nevada, Wyoming, some other different states, but uh, other places, you're, you're on the hook for more money. So just be aware of all that nonsense. So, okay, so before we go on, we need to really take a look at what is decentralized finance, just as a refresher. I know some of you are like, you know, super experts, so just stick with me. Um, what is yield farming? What's DeFi? All that good stuff, right? So this was an old article. This was in July 6th, 2020. So roughly about a month ago. And it says here, according to DeFi Pulse, there is 1.9 billion, billion in crypto assets. And what did we just see in the other article? It went from 1.9 to 4.22. So it has doubled in a month. That is amazing. And if you want to take a look at um, DeFi Pulse, I'll link in the description. Uh, you can just see exactly how much is locked up. Uh, for each different um, project. So Maker, 1.3 billion, Compound, 810 million, and then you just go down the list. It's a lot of money. So real quick, there's two types of tokens. There's just a regular token, like the basic attention token, any kind of token you can think of, right? That just represents money. There's a, there's a second type of token called a governance token, and that enables users to vote on the future of decentralized protocols and presents a fresh ways for DeFi founders to entice assets onto their platform. So Compound does this, right? They give away governance tokens and you can pretty much vote on like, well, how much do you want the interest rate? How much do you want to give away? How much do you want? So everything right there, there's two types of uh, actions for the tokens that you get. So let's just move down. So to read what I was, what I was talking about, so on the platform that proved DeFi could fly, MakerDAO, holders of its governance token Maker, MKR, Vote almost every week on small changes to parameters that govern how much it costs to borrow and how much savers earn and so on. So all these governance tokens that are given out, those are the people with like the real voting power or the voice of what's going to happen and how things are going to move forward. So it's pretty interesting how DeFi does all that. But the thing they all have in common, whether just a regular token or a governance token, is that they're all tradable and they have a price. And that is the big thing. They're all worth something. So DeFi is the thing that lets you play with money or represent money. And the only identification you need is a crypto wallet and that is why i'm going to tell you this is why DeFi is going to be so big for small businesses now i've said this before and i'm going to i'm going to reiterate that in a little bit but uh for retail investors it, you know sure it's great to get a loan it's great to uh, earn interest on the things that you save but uh, i can just tell you right now uh, when small business realizes how easy it is to get a loan and have liquidity and you don't have to jump through all the hoops that the banks make you do believe me i do it uh they're going to explode. So again, 
Ethereum 10K coin. Moving down. So here's the example for a DeFi they give. They say, go to MakerDAO, create $5 worth of DAI, which is a stable coin, usually worth a dollar, somewhere 99 cents, dollar two, whatever, out of the digital ether. Then go to Compound and you can borrow $10 in USDC. So right there, you've gone to exchange, you've bought a stable coin, you've taken that stable coin and you've borrowed against it and you have $10. So that essentially is pretty much what the banks do, just a heck of a lot easier and a lot less hassle. So this next sentence says it all. Immature and exper experimental though it might be, the technology's implications are staggering. And again, DeFi is made for the small business. Um, the best way to explain this is like this. Small businesses run on, on liquidity. You have to have cash flow. If you don't have cash flow and you're cash strapped, you can't get uh, inventory, you can't pay for overhead, you can't do a lot of things that a small business needs to do to thrive. So here's the thing. If you're a small business owner, and I'm just talking to, to you if you are, or if not, just kind of think of the concept. Imagine if you could borrow against the money that you have right now. You don't have to move the money. You can just borrow against that money. So let's say that you could, I don't know, borrow against your, your SEP IRA or your 401k, or you, you could borrow against the type of money that you have just kind of stashed away as collateral. And you could get that for like a super low interest rate, not like, you know, three and a half percent or four and a half or five percent but like sometimes like less than one percent and you could use that in in various terms and you could pay it back you know whenever you not whenever you want to but you know in a reasonable amount of time and not go through all the paperwork and not wait so long and not have credit checks and blah 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 i'm telling you right now the the only thing that, that hinders me as a business owner is my lack of capital or the inability to access capital. If I am uh, looking to sell product on Amazon, if I had $500,000 and I can get the right products based on, on distributors or uh, the, the manufacturers and I contact them and said, I have this, I'm going to give it to you. They're going to give me an invoice. If I have the money, then I can turn $500,000 into, I don't know, $625,000. And it would only take... I mean, however long it takes. I'm not going to, you know, blow smoke like Amazon's easy. It's not. It's a real pain. But um, if you have money already there and you can borrow against it, then it works out pretty well. Because here's the thing in business. It's always better to use someone else's money than your money. But the big thing is, and if we just take a step back and look at cryptocurrency, let's say you had $50,000 in cryptocurrency and you know it's going to go up. I mean, we all know it's going to go up. That's just the way it is. And I don't want to have to, or you may not want to have to sell your cryptocurrency. And, and you could have 10000 or 500000 It doesn't really matter. But you don't want to sell any of your cryptocurrency right now. So what if you could borrow against it and you can get capital and then you can buy products or any kind of overhead that you have and you can let your cryptocurrency just sit there and then the money that you make from selling your products, you can just put back into loan. It makes sense. And again, when small businesses figure that out, it's going to be game on. So moving on, it says, note that you can swap all these things back as soon as you've taken them out. Open the loan and close it 10 minutes later. It's fine. Fair warning. It might cost you a tiny bit in fees and, and the cost of Ethereum is pretty high right now. Uh, so you just have to watch out. But I mean, you could do that. The, the terms for banks are a lot more stringent. And sometimes they have these things called prepayment penalties, where if you pay it back too early, because they like to charge interest, that's where they make all the money. Uh, if you pay it back too much or too fast. They're like, oh, we're going to charge you. Like, what the heck? I'm paying your money back. That's just how it goes. So here's where it gets good. So doesn't running a bank or DeFi take a lot of money? It does. And in DeFi, money is largely provided by strangers like yourself. That's why the startups behind these apps come up with clever ways to attract hodlers with ideal assets. That's why the interest rates are so high right now, because they need that liquidity. And it states again, liquidity is the chief concern of all these different products. That is, how much money do they have locked in their smart contracts? So they need your cryptocurrency so they can loan things out and do all these different types of things. That's why you are a hot commodity. That's why they're trying to get you to take your cryptocurrency and put it onto their platform. And that's why I am so stringent on the different things that I talk about because I don't trust anybody. <laughs> I uh, it's very hard to, to go through this because I've lived the times of BitConnect. Maybe you have as well and all the different ICO scam crazes and whatnot. So when I add anything to my um, to my uh, uh, exchange uh, list and, and wallet fees and, and the different uh, things I talk about, it's because I vetted them and I trust them. And not only that, I use them. So uh, that's the big thing. So moving on, it says, let's take Uniswap as an example. Uniswap is an automated market maker or AMM. This means Uniswap is a robot on the internet that's always willing to buy and it's always willing to sell any crypto for which it has a market. 
On Uniswap, there's at least one market pair for any token on Ethereum. Behind the scenes, this means Uniswap can make it look like it's making a direct trade for any two tokens, which makes it very easy for users, but it's all built around pools of two tokens. And all these market pairs work better with bigger pools. So just real quick, I just found Uniswap uh, through this article. And I got to tell you, it is awesome. If you have the Brave browser, you can connect your, uh, your, your MetaMask or you can put your own... Uh, uh, Ethereum wallet on there and it's just so simple you just you just do that and that's always right there for you. you don't have to open up anything or do whatever it's just right there now I'm not gonna I'm telling you right now don't keep a lot of money on here because you never know right so I've got a whopping uh, 80 90 bucks right so I'm okay if I lose 90 bucks it's not gonna kill me but uh, for like little small transactions sure I can do these types of things all day long and everything's good and what was awesome about this is that I was looking for cell or Celsius because I really believe in that project I believe in Alex Mashinsky I believe in uh, the network and I was like where do I find Celsius well guess what I just took uh, my ethereum that I have in my uh, MetaMask wallet through um, that, that's uh, hosted on brave uh, a web3 app and then I just put it in there and then I said I wanted sell and then I boom I just did it and uh, that was it and it would took like uh, 10 seconds it was awesome because I couldn't find Celsius anywhere and now look what I got Celsius right there and if I want to transfer this I'm just gonna click on that I'm gonna click send and I'm gonna send it to any address for the Celsius network and, and then I'm done so um, I could keep it here I could transfer over there or maybe I just transfer to the Celsius wallet just saying because guess what I can learn a little nice little interest on Celsius and that leads me to my next point so if you look in the description of every one of my videos there's going to be a link it's going to look like this and it's going to link you to uh it says exchange fees but really it's, it's all the coinbase alternatives all the wallet alternatives and everything that i have ever used and reviewed and my honest opinion on them and then all the different things that you need to know about it like uh the fee charts that's why i don't uh recommend coinbase unless you're super new don't know what's going on use coinbase super simple uh even though voyager i think is just as simple but uh, it's got some huge uh inch uh uh, fees which is just sucks so then yeah coinbase pro gemini gemini pro abra uphold simple swap uniswap and uh there it is so uniswap i just give you the uh, the link right there and i just tell you what i did and um the fees are you don't pay for it's because it's a decentralized exchange so what you're paying for is not like it's like you know 10 or 3.5 percent or whatever else you just pay for the gas uh, the ethereum gas which is you know it's a little bit higher today but it'll go down at some point uh but it's not too much and uh it's super fast super easy and i like that and i go over cash app etoro do not recommend etoro sorry i just don't and then my little uh recent write-up for crypto.com and right now i'll just say this that uh, my one-two punch right now is voyager and celsius i love them both uh voyager is super simple uh, there is it's commission free. I was corrected uh, by somebody and and they were correct. It's commission free meaning that uh, they don't charge you anything to make those uh, um, uh, Those buys for any of your cryptocurrency what they do. They're like a brokerage think of like if you want to rent a hotel when you when you travel to a city, right? Would you go to Marriott and say, "Hey Marriott, uh, what's the rate?" Oh, what's well, one hundred sixty eight dollars, sir? And you're like, "Man, that sucks." Okay, here's one sixty eight. Or would you go to something like Trivago.com or Hotels.com, where they aggregate all these different uh, information sites that pulls the best data so you can get the best room? Well, that's kind of what what Voyager does, and the way that they make money is uh, from the spread. So I don't see the spread. They make money from it. I don't have to pay anything, so I'm happy. And then if they have to eat some costs, they eat some costs, and uh, you pay for you know whatever the quoted price is. So I like that. And then from there, from Voyager, I'll just transfer to Celsius. Not all of it, because I don't want to keep everything on a hot wallet. I put a lot in my Nano, uh, but if I want to earn interest. I uh, hear it all is. So with that Celsius, if I scroll on here, so for the Celsius, I'm gonna get 5.12 percent. Not too bad. And uh, it's not locked up, and I can take it any time. So I like that. That's pretty cool. And at the very top are the affiliate links. And uh, listen, you can go right to Celsius or right to Gemini or right to Voyager or right to whatever, and uh, you can sign up yourself. It's fine. Or if you want to use the affiliate link, you can, and you'll get 20, 10, 20, 25, whatever it is. So it's up to you. So it states how much money do people make by putting money in these products. So it's very lucrative. Uh, it's much more than a, than a bank. Banks suck. Uh, they get like, you know, 0.0002%, I think. I'm just kidding. It's very low. But uh, let's take like compound uh, as an illustration. As of this writing, a person can put USDC in a compound and earn 2.72% on it. Remember, this is this was back in a ways. Uh, this was in July. You get a lot more now for USDC. 
So, but there's a reason the interest rates are so much juicier. DeFi is a far riskier place to park your money. There's no FDIC uh, to protect your funds. And if someone puts a, puts a run on compound, then you can't withdraw anything. Has it happened? Not yet. Will it happen? I have no idea. Plus, the interest is quite variable. You don't know what you'll earn over the course of a year. USD rates are high, uh, and it hovers somewhere in the 1% range. It's much higher now. Will it stay high? Can't stay high. Uh, what goes up must come down. So what's yield farming? Yield farming is any effort to put crypto assets to work. At the simplest level, yield farm might move assets around with compound, constantly chasing whichever pool is offering the best APY from week to week. This might move into riskier pools, but where we're used to risk. So if you want to do that, go right ahead. In a simple example, yield farm might put 100,000 USDT into compound. Yeah, that's a lot of money. They will get a token back for that stake called CUSDT. Let's say you get 100,000 CUSDT, which right now is I think like two cents. CUSDT. Now USDT, you know, is tethered. So if you got 100,000 laying around, knock yourself out. And then to finish up, it says they can then take the USDT, the CUSDT, and put it into a liquidity pool that takes USD, CUSDT on a balancer, and they can earn a small amount in transaction fees. So the more you have, the more you're going to earn. But you got to have a lot of money in this in this sense. Now these days, I mean, I've seen things like 12%, 14%, 18%. Uh, APY. So they really want your uh, stable coins uh, because they need the liquidity. So why is yield farming so hard? Because of liquidity mining. Liquidity mining is when a farmer, a yield farmer gets a new token as well as the usual return. Essentially, you are double dipping. So that's why it's so great. And that's why everybody's looking for the best rates. And that's it in a nutshell, really. So I know that was long, but it's going to pay dividends in a little bit. So the tax part, because remember, it's not how much you make it's how much you keep. So for instance, compound C tokens accrue interest by becoming more expensive. So the interest is received when converting C tokens back to other assets. Hence, interest rates on C tokens are taxed as capital gains rather than as income. That sucks. Major complication, of course, is reporting uh, USD value of each transaction within the DeFi ecosystem. For active yield farmers, this can become incredibly tedious. Imagine every transaction that you had to do, because that's what it is. You're selling, you're getting interest. You have to record that and report that to the government. If you don't, uh, the different places that, if, here's the thing, when you sign up for anything, did you uh, put in your ID? Did you put in your social security? Did you put in your address? Because all these different things are going to Big Brother. So on some places, uh, you can get away with it. I don't know where those are. I don't want to talk about those because I don't want to deal with that. But uh, if you've done any kind of AML, anti-money laundering, or KYC, know your customers, uh, the government knows and you got to watch out because we got to play by the rules. Now, there's ways to minimize that, and I'm not going to talk about that here, but uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So to finish up, Many transactions on Uniswap, for instance, involve multi-step conversion, and every step should be reported in the USD. Finally, if you end up lending your crypto along the way and the interest is paid each block, you will need to report each instance of receiving interest. So all the other things that you do is going to lead to you gaining some type of crypto. Now, to cash out into US dollars, if that's your thing, then you will have to report that as taxes. And I'm not going to go down here because the rest is just more depressing stuff. So I'm just going to make this super simple. Uh, just use CryptoTrader.tax. So back in June, I did a couple of videos uh, for them, and uh, I, I still believe in, in their project. It's great. I personally use that for my taxes. And you got to understand, if I use it for my taxes, I trust it. I sent it to my CPA. She did everything. Super simple. Saved me a lot of time and heartache and money. So if you're looking for that in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link. It's going to look like this. And you still get a discount uh, just for putting in, in that code or, or clicking on the link. So definitely use that. And for all the things that we just talked about, this is why I believe Ethereum is a 10K minimum coin. Everything's built on it. ERC20 tokens. Um, the new mainnet or uh, Ethereum 2.0 is coming out uh, with sharding and proof of stake. And it's going to be super fast, hopefully. On top of that, plus DeFi. So I just don't see how this project can fail. The only way it can be is if you've got the people in the back coming up on their heels. You got Cardano, you got Tezos, you got well, maybe EOS, I don't know. And uh, all the different other players out there that can do these types of things. But uh, it, it remains to be seen. I just think it's going to be a big thing. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And that's going to lead me to the question of the day. So uh, let's jump into my office. All right, everybody, and welcome to my uh, indoor office. This is a little bit different than the actual uh, pool office. 
because I'm actually inside because it's like way too hot today. I usually like to be out there because it's just simple. So uh, today's question, and actually before I start with that, um, I'm going to explain to you uh, after this why I don't record in this room too much uh, to answer these questions. I've only done it outside because to me it only made sense. So anyhow, the question today comes from Fox, Foxtrot. Okay. And uh, he or she says, uh, hi, I just want to thank you for educating me on crypto. Uh, you're welcome. I don't think I've done that much, but thanks. He says, I like your analysis and learn from you a lot. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions. Please reply if possible. One, I want to start professional crypto trading, but I don't know anything about trading. I can't even understand basic terms. Uh, though I invest in biggies like ETH, Bitcoin, Cardano, Link, I want to have basic knowledge so I can trade also. So uh, to answer that first question is uh, I am the... Uh, the antithesis, uh, I am the wrong person to ask about anything about trading. I am not a trader. I don't do anything with it. And uh, if you want to know anything about trading, uh, you're going to have to go someplace else because I am just not into it. And uh, it doesn't, if you want to trade, that's all up to you. Uh, you know, great. I'm just not big into trading uh, because I have other things to do and I don't have the patience uh, to actually learn about it. I just dollar cost average. I just go in and uh, every week or every day I add in a certain amount and over time everything seems to work itself out. Now there are times like in 2017 when you're gonna have to hold some bags for a while but in the long run and that is a big thing. What are you here for? Are you here for the long run or are you here for just you know just to make some money quick? If you're here to make some money quick uh, there's some you know trading things out there you can try. Um, you know, you can be that 5% that makes it. I, I don't know. But uh, for me, I, to answer your question, I cannot help you with this. And I will tell you what I know, and I'll tell you what I don't know. And I don't know anything about trading, so uh, that's that. Sorry. Uh, for the second one, uh, it says, I want to learn about decentralized finance also. Can you please guide me on where to start from the basics? And that is one of the reasons why we went so in detail with the, uh, with the DeFi, with uh, the yield farming and the basics and going to some more advanced stuff. So I need to go over all those things uh, just to help Foxtrot and hopefully to help some of you uh, as far as like decentralized finance. And that's the big thing. So I hope uh, that answered uh, your question. Again, for the first one, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my man, I just, I can't help you, I don't know. So that that is the first part. The second part is um, I don't record in this room too much uh, because, or at all, because the lighting is horrible. Uh, I have the lights back here, and if you know anything about video production, when you have the lights back there, it just sucks. So to get your lights up here, I had to get one of these things called a ring light, and uh, it helps a lot. I'm gonna show you the difference here. So when I don't do, when I don't have that, and I shut this thing off, you know, everything looks a little bit uh, blotchy. It looks like I'm in, uh, you know, some kind of weird place. Uh, skin's a little bit off. Uh, and look, we're all vain. What are you going to do? So like, like with this type of thing, if you are into, uh, you know, you making YouTube videos or making uh, Instagram videos or Facebook or just want to look good, uh, you know, I definitely recommend getting one of these lights because it helps a whole heck of a lot, especially just to keep things in front of you. And it's pretty cool because like it's just right there. It's very mobile. It's very light and uh, it lasts so far. So if you're into that, I'll put a link in the description. I don't get any money for that. Uh, it's not an affiliate link. It's just to link to you know, where I got it. And uh, that's it. Okay, so, and that's it. So thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Before we go, just so you know that there is a uh, join button. I don't, it's, uh, you don't get anything special. It's just like a tip, like bug 99. But um, uh, for everybody that does that, I just wanna say thanks so much. So for the new ones, uh, Frank Weinhammer, I don't know why you're up here, but uh, you're level one. Patrick May, Victor Von Ravenswood. That's a good name, Victor Van Ravenswood. Ricky Taylor, Fulja, I like that, uh, Jimmy J. Uh, Dan Haggerty, True Blue One, and Neil. <laughs> That's pretty good. So thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. If you like those videos, two more that's going to pop up when you're left and right. Don't know. I have no control over that. Just like the ads that you see, I don't know what if they're scams or not. I don't have control over that. YouTube does. So if you like these types of videos, two more that's going to pop up. Check those out. See you on the next one.